Oof. It's a little hot for a hood. It has been so long since I've recorded anything, I've almost forgotten what I'm doing. <sighs> we always strive for that work-life balance, but work's been crazy, life's been crazy, and things have gone undone. <laughs> but we are back in the greenhouse garden area, and one of my spendy roses is in bloom, and I am super happy because my rose fence failed. The roses aren't dead. You just can't see them from all the weeds. And I can't get to the weeds because the pond's too high. So there will be an overhaul this fall where we'll move things about. However, welcome to my channel. This is chaos yet organized. It's an organized chaos. That's how we roll here. If you like those types of things, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. And so would Elvis. Maybe it would make him be quiet. We can always try. But the goal this morning is to get... I'm, it's so early. I have space and I haven't had enough coffee. Um, things planted. <laughs> I bought... Uh, the hydrangeas. Get the hydrangeas planted. I bought some clearance hydrangeas that have been in the pots way too long. And it's time to get them planted. So we're going to see if I fall on my butt while I'm trying to do this. So let me get you all set up. See if Elvis will calm his butt down. And we're going to get these babies planted and probably do some weeding and check on the big garden because we're up here at what I call the small... Hey, will you... Elvis! You're a... Can't say those words on YouTube. Okay, let's get this started because Elvis is being a jerk. There is Elvis being a jerk. Oh, you're walking away from him now and leaving him alone, huh? Mm-hmm. See? He's being a jerk. All right, let's get to planting and leave Elvis and the chicks alone. So we have a few weeds, but these right here are daylilies, which I found on the property. And I'm not quite sure if I'm keeping them but they're there for now. So let's put one of these guys, my Gretchia. The chickens are super excited because this means I'm gonna make some bugs mad and they're gonna get a feast. <coughs> and I did water all this last night just to make this simpler on me. So this is called Bloomstruck. Like, I seriously got these on clearance. They were $7 a piece. As you can tell, they're fading, but we're going to see if we can save them. My goal, actually, is to save them and to propagate them. Okay, he's a little Not as bad as I thought, though. <laughs> this should be very well fertilized soil. We had the chickens here for a couple of months. But let's get sun and shade. So it should be perfect for the hydrangeas. All right, there's one down. Two more to go. And a free bucket. Free buckets are always good. Oh, yeah. So let's talk about hydrangeas. These beauties are showstoppers in any garden with the blooms so big they practically shout, look to me. But here's something cool. Did you know their flower colors can change based on the soil? In acidic soil, you'll get gorgeous blues and in alkaline soil, the blooms turn pink. Some gardeners even play with coffee grounds or garden lime to get the shade they want. Instant garden magic, which is why I love these plants. Hydrangeas are also, no ordinary bloom. These plants go all the way back over 40 million years. Fossil evidence shows they've been around since prehistoric times, which makes them one of the oldest garden friends out there. Not only are they ancient, but they're also pretty adaptable, growing well in zones three through nine. Whether you're in cooler or warmer areas, there's a hydrangea that will fit right into your area. They do have a couple of quirks though. Hydrangeas are very, very thirsty plants. They love moist, well-drained soil. So you'll want to keep up with watering, especially during really hot summer days, and give them some morning sun and afternoon shade if you're in a warmer climate. 
If you're planting them, space them about three to 10 feet apart. It really depends on the hydrangea variety that you are planting. Oh, and a heads up for pet owners. Hydrangeas contain a compound that could be toxic to animals if eaten. So while they're stunning, it's a good idea to keep curious pets from snacking on them. As if it, all that wasn't enough, hydrangeas have some interesting symbolism, the language of flowers. They represent gratitude, apology, and understanding. So they're perfect if you need a subtle way to say, I'm sorry for letting the garden get out of control last week. Here's a hydrangea. Another fun tidbit to close on, hydrangea flowers have two types of blooms on each plant. Those big showy mop head blooms we love, they're actually sterile. The little less noticeable ones are the real deal when it comes to reproduction. And that's your hydrangea deep dive. Now, whether you're planning to add some of these stunners to your garden or just enjoy a little garden trivia, I hope you're feeling inspired. Are you team blue or team pink? And if you have any cool hydrangea hacks or maybe a fun story, drop them in the comments. Let's get the gardening gossip going. And hey, don't forget to like, subscribe, and tap that bell if you want more garden goodness coming your way until next time. Happy planting and may your hydrangeas be ever in bloom. Bye y'all. I hope you have a blessed and magical week.